So I'd like to talk about um, ordered solids. And to get the discussion started, I'll talk about a couple of levels of order, or really you know, what this, this refers to is organization. I mean, this a special organization, but or it's organization. <clears throat> so what I wanted to, to, to mention is, first of all, short range order, and then we'll get into long range order. And so short range means basically at the atomic level or near, maybe I should say, I should say that would be better, near. Let me just let me fix that. Near the atomic level. I'll give you an example. And long range then, by contrast, is, I'll say, well beyond the atomic level. So, you know, tens, hundreds, thousands of atoms away, you still have organization or order. Uh, well beyond atomic level. So let's look at a, a short range order example. Let's say gas, in the gas phase. So you may think that there's you know, no order. You've just got these molecules zipping around, right? There's one that's meant to be a molecule. And there's another, you know, and so on. Like going all different ways, and there's apparently no relationship between them, and, and that's that's, that's cor so well somewhat correct. But the there is some organization, I mean, depending on the on the on the gas. But say say the gas, for example, is O2. So we've got oxygen. Well, what happened? Uh, so okay, there we go. Um, <laughs> suddenly scrolled down there. Okay, so we've got O2. Well, what's O2? O, so it's oxygen covalently bonded to another oxygen. Those are two O's. And so th there is some order in the sense that you know bonded to this atom here is going to be another um, oxygen. That That is a level of organization. Obviously, it is near the atomic level. Um so we call it short-range order, and, and beyond that, if you know that there's a molecule here, for instance, you don't know where any of these, these other uh, molecules are going to be. So it's only short-range order. On the other hand, this is the case in, in many solids, particularly the ones that were... Uh, I mean, not always. You can have solids with no long-range order, but in, in some solids, many solids, there is organization well beyond the atomic level. So if we had one atom there, say, for example, aluminum, you could have an atom there, an atom there, an atom there, and so on. And I'm just drawing this in one dimension. You know, if I drew it in two dimensions, it would look like this. And maybe in three dimensions, you'd have you know, a third dimension going back into the page there. I'm trying to draw a little cube. And, and that actually might be a bit of a alien topic to a lot of people to appreciate that there is long-range order, this this beautiful organization to to solids. So what I wanted to do to is to, to make you uh, hopefully a little bit more comfortable with that is, is to give a few everyday examples. So for example, um, many people will have seen, uh, where, there we go, okay, um, quartz. You know, maybe you've got a quartz countertop at home or something like that. So we've got some, that's quartz. And quartz, you might know, is, is a silicon and oxygen. But y if you look at it, you see it's a crystal. And, and you're probably, most people will be comfortable with that being called a crystal. And you may know, in fact, that crystals have regular atomic arrangement there, have a regular repeating arrangement. Of course, Crystals, a lot of times the lay public thinks that crystals must be um, transparent, you know, catch the light nicely. And that's actually not a requirement of it being crystal. The crystallinity just refers to the organization of the atoms. And I've kind of highlighted some boundaries there. In fact, an exciting thing is that these boundaries and the angle between these, these faces 
uh, actually derives from some symmetry that occurs at the atomic level. But there is certainly an organization well, well beyond that of a single atom. Okay, um, let, let me give you another example. This is a everyday um, kind of example, but uh, one that perhaps you haven't uh, thought about, and it is table salt. So there goes a beautiful picture that I grabbed online, and this is this is uh, salt. So and this is at a magnification that you wouldn't normally see, but you start, you start to see that there's seems to be some cubic symmetry here. It looks almost like a cube. And look at this little little guy coming off the surface of this other crystal of salt. So this is salt. This is, in fact, um, you know, table salt, rock salt, NaCl. Just the type of stuff that you eat. And there is, even to these little crystals, some... There, there's, there's these... these um, <laughs> sorry, the boundaries, the faces, you know, they have clear organization. And that organization stems from organization of the atoms so at the atomic level we actually have atoms organized in a particular arrangement and that's something you, you can look at to, to other I've got a video on the crystal structure of salt but it has um, this is an incomplete picture that I'm sketching here I'm, rounded out somewhat, but there you go, that's getting the idea. So there's some organization at the atomic level, and it's beautiful. You can actually see that arrangement macroscopically. Just You pour some salt on the table, and you're looking at some little crystals, and they'll have geometry to them. Let me show you a few other uh, examples. Um, probably, well, this one here, a little bit less familiar, perhaps. Um, all right, what's that? That's, it's in my office. Uh, it's a piece of bismuth, actually. So this is metal. Uh, it's this is bismuth, and again, you can see that there's there's some some sort of an apparently some organization to it, and um, that stems again from the arrangement of atoms. So the, although this is shiny, it's not transparent, but that's fine. It's still crystalline. It still has long range order. Uh, whoops, long range order. There's organization well beyond the atomic scale, and this is just an example where we can see it with the naked eye. Let me show you another example from uh, just this past summer. Well, for me it was. Uh, but uh, what what's this? What am I showing you this for? Well, this this is a ski lift pole, right? And uh, sky ski ski lift. There we go. Um, tower. Okay, and. I wasn't skiing in the summer, but I was uh, sightseeing in Vancouver. And, um, you know, on, on the surface of that tower, as is the case even on, on, on uh, a lot of poles around the city, uh, traffic poles and railings and things, you may, if you look carefully, you may see uh, some sort of a, a funny and interesting pattern on the surface. And maybe difficult to see at this magnification. I'll show you another figure of a handrail, um, which is really interesting and fascinating. So look at this handrail here. This was, uh, again, at Grouse Mountain, actually. And you see these little these, these little patterns on the surface. Well, what's, what's going on there, you know? it's Did they did an artist make those? No, well, the artist of... <laughs> I don't know, the artist of science. The... the um, the rules of science created this uh, thermodynamics and, and, and all this good stuff. So, so the, what are the, those are actually zinc crystals. So, there are regions where zinc atoms are arranged in a regular repeating arrangement. They have long range order, millions, um, well, well beyond millions of, of of atoms of zinc are all. And, arranged in the same ray, same orientation within each of these little crystals and it just happens that the the sweat in people's hands as they're going on the on this um, uh, up and down the staircase holding the railing the, the salts and things that we corrode away the grain boundaries a little bit so we can nicely see and they, the, the friction actually polishes the surface so we can see these little crystals of zinc on the surface so so clearly another example this is from uh, I think a couple of years ago uh, um, I just happened to see this, and it is, here we go, um, 
one of those little binoculars that you can put 25 cents in and, and look uh, look around the city. And uh, here, and this is brass, it's a, but you can see it's a metal again, and, and you can see all these little grains highlighted again where people have touched it and it's been etched away and polished a little bit. But those are little crystals uh, that are, are visible. And these are just some examples. I mean, there's, there's countless ones, and I encourage you to look for other examples all around you. But there's examples of crystals all, all around us, organization, long-range order. Um, and, and just to to wrap things up here, what I wanted to, what I want you to start thinking about is, okay, if we have some long-range order, say, let me give you a, an analogy. Um, uh, say a parking lot. Okay, I'm not sure if this analogy is is gonna you know work all that well. But if if I said, okay, here's uh, I'm drawing in the the parking spots. <laughs> okay, this is what I'm trying to do. So let me uh, let me draw for you a a blue car. No, a red car. There you go. There's a red car. Okay, and the red car has yellow lights up at the front. Okay. And whatever you know, there's a roof. So that that's a car. And that's a, a horrible picture of a car, but I hope you believe me. That's a car. So if I told you that this parking lot was in fact full of cars, well then that would be a form of long-range order. I mean, perhaps just in one dimension, this this way, it's long-range order in the sense that if I told you this parking lot was full, you wouldn't need to know what the, the whole rest of the parking lot looked like, you would know that there's going to be another car uh, located, uh, and in fact, we could even do the other side, you know, here, here, here. So in a sense, there's, I mean, this is not long range order anywhere near, you know, we're getting to moles, you know, like 10 to the 23 um, cars or something. We're talking on a small scale, but I'm trying to give you something you can relate to. There's some organization beyond the level of just this car being next to this one. And in fact, the, where I'm trying to take this is, is if I were to describe that parking lot to you, all I would need to do, in fact, is describe one parking spot. And I, if I told you that, that one parking spot continued in one dimension, or in fact, say I drew these two back to back, and so that's actually, actually going to be, I'll just call it this, I'll call it two if we want to get a whole row of parking spots, two parking spots is the smallest convenient unit, um, convenient geometry, if you will, that describes um, the larger structure or describes the organization. Okay, another example would be uh, a brick wall. You know, if I had one brick wall, or sorry, one, I'll say here, okay, here's my brick wall. And, you know, there's another course of bricks, and another, and, and so on. I mean, I don't need to draw the whole wall for you to know that if the brick is this size, all I really need to describe is this brick here to give you a sense to, to have, have you understand what the brick wall looks like. And I could define these you know, dimensions of the brick there. But the brick would be a small, convenient unit that I could use to describe it. And similarly, with crystals, we have small, convenient units that describe the crystals. And many, many of them are, in fact, cubic. Okay, so many are cubic, and just like I did over here, I tried to do, you know, maybe X and Y or something, we could call those dimensions. For unit, these, these cubic units, we can define the dimensions, and in the case of a cube, of course, they're all the same. We use the lowercase letter A uh, um, to just define the dimensions of that unit, and we call that unit the unit cell. So in yellow uh, ink there, it's, it's a piece of terminology. That's the unit cell. It's the smallest convenient unit that describes for you that entire long range order.